My name is Robin Mohelner. I'm a licensed psychotherapist in California living with bipolar disorder. And this video is on why we should stay on our medication. And I'm not going to do this the way a traditional psychotherapist would. I'm going to do it the way I lead Team Thrive, which is Thrive with Bipolar Disorder on Facebook. And that is, I share from my own experience. And in my own experience, I was just like everyone else who has been on medication. I've been on, I was on lithium for 15 years and was very stable on lithium. I achieved tremendous goals on lithium, yet I had this horrible side effect, what's called lithium-induced psoriasis. And there is lots of people who've told, shared with me on Team Thrive that they too experience horrible side effects. So everyone at some point has the desire to stop taking their medications. And I'm going to share with you why not to do that and why that is a mistake. And the reason why I know it's a mistake isn't because of the statistics and the facts and the figures. It's because after I achieved all of my big goals, I made the decision to go off of my medication because I had this false sense of security that was created by 15 years of education and, and 15 years of developing coping skills and 7 years of doing everything that it takes to become a psychotherapist. I truly believed in all my heart that I had what it took to manage bipolar disorder on my own without medication. So my story begins there. It begins with slowly tapering off of the meds and having mild hypomania and being able to manage it and contain it just fine. But what happened was there came a point in time when I didn't, I had a big, huge goal. It was just at the finish line of achieving my biggest goal that I had set the you know, set in life, basically. And I did everything that I possibly could to prepare myself to not go hypomanic as I achieved that goal. And when the goal came, three days before the goal came, I s stopped being able to sleep. And I, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware that prior to that I had been hypomanic for, for like a few weeks because I had taken such good care of myself. So I ended up achieving my goal as I crashed into depression. And as I was crashing into depression, I was in denial. I, I, there was no way that I was willing to acknowledge that what I was experiencing was depression, so I did everything I possibly could. I used all of my coping skills. Did all of, I did therapy on myself, I did coaching on myself, you name it. I refused to acknowledge that I was losing control. I exercised, I did all of the right things. Everything we're trained to do, I did. Yet, the depression kept getting worse. And I was ashamed. And I was ashamed to get help. I was ashamed to go to a psychiatrist and say, yeah, I'm a therapist and I went off of my medication. I went against everything I know because I had this false sense of security that made me feel like I could beat the odds. So I didn't go. I didn't see a therapist. I didn't see a, a psychiatrist. I let it get worse. And I let it get worse for two months. And as it got worse, what that meant was I stopped being able to think. I stopped being able to feel. I had so much anxiety in my legs that I, I didn't feel like I could carry my own weight when I walked. Uh, I wasn't able to function. 
And I was so ashamed I didn't want anybody to know. Um, I didn't want anybody in my life to know. I didn't want anybody to know how bad it was. And I finally got to a point where I started having thoughts of if, if the walls in my home were to collapse on me and if I were to die, I would be okay with that. And that's, that's when I when I knew, I knew I had a problem, but I also knew from all of my training that I knew that I was coming out of the depression. So this gave me a flicker of, I can do this on my own, I don't need help. So I continued to believe I didn't need help because I was having suicidal thoughts, which is insane, I know. Um, so what ended up happening is I did start to come out of the depression and I'd start to have good days and okay days and bad days and I started to let people in my life know that I'd been experiencing depression. Um, so the problem was is I felt even more out of control as I was coming out of the depression because I couldn't predict if it was going to be a good day or a bad day and it was horrible for me. And it got to a point after enough, a few weeks of that, I decided I can't live like this. How, how can I function and do what I really am meant to be doing in life if, I, if I'm like this? So I, I went and got help, and I saw a psychiatrist. And there was no shame whatsoever that I received from my psychiatrist. Um, no shame. She never judged me for going off on my meds. In fact, she put me on Lamictal, which was a medication that I had always wanted to be on. And it worked wonderfully. It helped so much to get me out of the, the final stages of depression and, and get me stable. But my problem was that a month in, I developed what's called Stevens-Johnson Syndrome which is the lethal lamictal rash. And, oh, I was, I was so sad. I, it didn't hit me that I could have died. I was so sad that I wasn't going to get to be on this medication anymore. And they ended up having to inject me with steroids and put me on steroids for five days. And I don't know if you know much about steroids, but steroids cause full-on, full-blown hypo... Not hypomania, mania. And I was jumping out of my body manic so my psychiatrist had to put on put me on heavy duty antipsychotics and that sedated me for 5 days after having gone through everything i went through yet everything i went through i looked at it as a blessing and as i looked over it even even when i was in my worst of my depression I told myself, I need this. This is a blessing. This is going to give me and teach me the things that I need to, I need to know to be able to help people. Because I had had 15 years of stability. It had, been, it had been actually 16 years since I had had my first full-blown episode. So I needed this relapse. But I wouldn't wish it on anyone. And it took a while for me to get on the right meds. I was on was a bunch of wrong ones after the Lamictal that just didn't feel right. Finally, I begged to be back on lithium and have my psoriasis back, which, you know, I'm back on lithium, I'm stable, I have my psoriasis back. But the message I want you to take home is that no matter what coping skills you have, don't, don't follow in my footsteps. Don't make the same mistake I did. Stay on your medication and know that if you go off, there's no shame. There's no shame. Get help right away. Don't wait two months and suffer 
for two months because you're ashamed of what your psychiatrist might say for having gone off. So that's my story for today, and I look forward to seeing you soon.